I see it as a moral obligation to use my voice that I have in every single situation that I can. If it was us in the position of the animals, like always think about what would we want other people to do and how would we want them to speak up for us. Hi beautiful beans, it's Rebecca the Vegan Pixie Warrior. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am interviewing an activist from Austria. Her name is Kirsten. What led to this interview was a few weeks ago someone reached out to me on my channel saying they want to get involved in activism but they don't know how. So I did a little bit of detective work. I was passed Kirsten's details on from a fellow activist friend of mine in Bali and Kirsten agreed to an interview. So I hope you enjoy. Hi Kirsten, thank you for joining me on my channel today. How are you? Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm excited to meet you. I've heard lots of things. We've got a mutual friend, Alden, so I've heard lots of yeah. things about you. Um, so I'm going to ask the same question I ask everybody is, when did you first become vegan and why? Um, I first became vegan in... January 2018 so I'm close to three years of being vegan and uh, yeah it's actually a, a little bit of a longer story because uh, when I met my partner nine years ago I met him having a plant-based diet uh, what he back then called vegan but of course <laughs> uh, we kind of switched back to a vegetarian diet so um, because we didn't know so many things that are happening to the animals and we didn't have any sources uh, we can look up the information so um, so yeah we yeah so three years ago we actually came across uh, some YouTube channels and um, yeah that was basically when we when we have more to do with uh, veganism and of course the ethical part of veganism because that's what veganism is about and um, yeah then we knew why we went vegan and stayed vegan since then. Was it a certain video that you watched that made the, the choice for you? Yes yeah, so uh, the first video that stayed on my mind the whole time was the video by James Aspie where he was having a random conversation on the streets uh, at a street activism event. And uh, he was talking to that, I think she, it was a German girl, um, where he talked about the dairy industry. And um, I, was, I was just shocked. I was sitting here in this, in this same chair and I was watching that video. And I, at the beginning, I didn't really want to watch it because it was like, yeah, I don't know if, if, if that's, uh, what I want to watch, you know, with like the footage and everything. Uh, but my partner, he was uh, recommending me that video and I was watching that video. I was just like so shocked about what I didn't know uh, about the dairy industry. And it, it touched me so much because I was a vegetarian for eight years before I went vegan. And that was because I was always like, what's wrong with me? To, uh, what's wrong with dairy and eggs? So um yeah and that video gave me the answer it showed me what is wrong with milk and eggs and uh it was just that moment where i kind of felt like the switch was uh yeah how do you say <laughs> yeah you're lucky i i went straight from meat eater to vegan wow okay so, um, but I tried to go vegetarian when I was a kid, but my parents were like, no, you can't, you need to eat meat for your health and stuff and all the usual bullshit. So yeah. <laughs> and whereabouts in the world are you based? Uh, I'm based in Vienna, Austria. Okay. So I've been living here for 13 years. I think it's already, yeah. Grew up in a, in a smaller town in lower Austria, but moved to Vienna when I was 18. So <laughs> And um, so when, how long did it take you to go from going vegan to becoming an animal rights activist? And what was the motivation for that? Um, so it's hard to say because um, there were a few moments, like when I, the moment when I watched that video, I remember I kind of felt like I had all this information and I wanted to share it with people right away. So um, of course I had a lot of 
conversations back and forth with my partner. And then I extended that to my family and I extended that to, to friends. And uh, I think I would say that was about four months into veganism. But then I would more say I, I became vegan when I started doing street activism because that was the moment where I was like, okay, I, I, I'm doing something actively and yeah, to change it. And I'm out there and I'm putting myself out there besides Instagram because I used Instagram as well. Um, but I had the feeling that was like the, the breaking point of me um, standing up for who I am as a person, as an activist and as a, as a outspoken vegan. And yeah, so, <laughs> and I would say that, that was about eight months in. So um, actually pretty late for me <laughs> because I was so loud the whole time. Yeah, well, I've got a friend of mine, he's, he's 83 now, um, and he's an animal rights activist, and he said wow. he didn't become vegan until he became an activist. Yeah. And he's been vegan yeah. since he was 66, and it took him a while, but he's the same thing as you. He, he considers himself vegan once he became active. Yeah. So was street activism the first form of activism you did, or was it something else? Mm, because there's so many different uh, ways of doing activism, I would say, the first real activism that I did was over Instagram. And um, I remember I got a lot of reactions because I went from, I used to have what now is my activism account. I used to have a model account. So I was showing beautiful pictures taken by professional photographers and everything was about makeup. And so it was, um, yeah. And then in between I used to, make stories about the animal industry. I didn't show any slaughterhouse footage back then uh, because I kind of wanted to reach people on a different level and level and kind of wanted them to slide into the information kind of, but that quickly became too not real for me. And I, I think I would say that, that activism over Instagram was the first that I did. And um, yeah, and then street activism, and then I started my blog. And so, I, yeah, I tried to reach out to people on different, um, yeah, platforms. And of course, also in reality, kind of, so in, in real life. And yeah, um, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's hard to say what. Yeah, I think online Sorry. activism is very, no, no, it's fine. I think online activism is really effective because I, I, I believe that that is the growth of veganism in the last like four or five years. I mean, I've only been vegan for three years, but the difference in that three years since I've been vegan of the growth is huge. And it's gotta be from like social media and yeah. YouTube videos and Instagram posts. I mean, I'm quite new to Instagram myself, so I'm a, a lot older than you. So um, I'm trying to get used to it, but yeah, online activism is, is definitely effective. When I've shared um, a live feed at a vigil, then the reaction I get from my non-vegan friends and family is, is quite powerful, I think. Yeah, yeah. I experienced it too. It was uh, one time I was in a slaughterhouse and that was, I think, the most effective form of activism I ever did online and showed that footage because it got shared so many times all over the globe and, and especially people who know me. And I think they were kind of, irritated at first if I was truly in there and why I would do that they had so many questions and I think it, it was a uh, was very effective this way and also the vigils outside of the slaughterhouse and um yeah just that constant content that I'm putting out there I think that's that's what shows other people okay she's really passionate about it and she she's not stopping like every single day she has something new horrible of course horrible things yeah. to tell and and yeah, yeah, definitely I'm important. That. <laughs> and did you have any blocks? Did you have any like anxiety or job issues or family stopping, you know, preventing you from getting started that you had to get over? Um, to start street activism, you mean? Yeah. Or well, street um, activism, or all all activism that you you're involved mm -hmm. in. Well, I think the first block. I wouldn't call it block. Um, it was I was in a group of nine friends so we were all like it was this uh photography model and makeup girls group and uh i like i experienced a lot of like 
distancing and like the moment I put all the content out there and um, but I that was really interesting because I always considered myself someone who was really like didn't you know want to start any discussion and I I was always someone who didn't really have like an opinion and the moment I went vegan and started doing activism I had I had to have an opinion and that put a lot of people off and I think they couldn't deal with that. So that's what I've experienced. But um, then I've seen, okay, it's a decision uh, for me to stay with those people or to part with those people or to find like a middle ground. And um, unfortunately, uh, one girl stayed with me. She went vegan <laughs> after this whole uh, discussion about veganism and the other eight, uh, yeah, I parted ways with them. So um but for the good now yeah. looking back at it um and yeah besides that not really i think i was like my insecurity about doing street activism was like the biggest thing that kept me off doing it for a long time and i didn't know any activist group in vienna so i didn't even know that they existed so i think that was <laughs> what was blocking yeah. me a little bit yeah, I, I suffer with anxiety myself, and I find that since I got involved with street activism just over two years ago, it's helped my confidence no end. And I have to remind myself when I'm leaving the house to prevent me having a panic attack is that I'm not doing yeah. it for me, I'm doing it for the mm -hmm. animals. Yeah. Um, and that, that really helps me and, and definitely supports me and gets me going on it. Um, it leads us really nicely on the next question with your answer there is how did you get involved? How did you find out about? getting involved in activism yeah so um since i saw this first video uh on youtube of james aspie and then i uh also watched a lot of videos of uh joey Carbstrong and um earthling ed of course i um i saw that they were doing street activism with anonymous for the voiceless and that's how i looked up anonymous photo whistles on the internet and then somehow came across that they have a group in Vienna and that's how I started doing street activism. I, I remember writing them, like I entered the group in Vienna and then I, I wrote the organizers and they were like, oh, we actually have a demonstration tomorrow. Do you want to come? And I was like, oh, tomorrow, oh my God, you know, it's, <laughs> it's so soon. And um, I didn't know if I was ready for it. And to be honest on, on the way there, I actually thought about just get back on the metro, turn around and go back home because I felt like I didn't know it all. Like I didn't know enough to actually do this. But then, like you said, you know, I had the animals in mind and I was like, well, you know, this is not about me. This is about the animals and using my voice to speak up for them. And that's when, yeah, I just went there. Didn't know anybody there, but everybody was so welcoming and so warm-hearted and it just um yeah i felt like part of the group right away and that was really a wonderful experience and that also yeah. kept me going besides the animals just the community and um yeah exactly the same experience to me i was really nervous and i went there and i, I met a guy um who was a volunteer turned up early and we had a drink together beforehand and then went over and the organizer uh, madison was just amazing she was so welcoming and there was no pressure to do any outreach on the first time I could stand in the cube and yeah. you know being part of the cube formation is a massive important part of it because if you didn't have the cube people wouldn't be attracted and, and come towards us and we wouldn't be able to speak to them in the first place but Absolutely. I found within like 20 minutes of standing in the cube I was like listening to other conversations going I could have said that I know that and then I just jumped out and, and did my outreach on my first event which was wow. very addictive yeah and then two months later I became an organizer and I was organizer for two years so wow. yeah, it was, it was a big part of my life so that I think it's so such an effective form like earthlings events and and the the AV Cube of Truths that they're so effective talking to the public and the public are so receptive as well yeah the, the amount of times they say thank you for telling me this at the end of the mm -hmm. conversation it, it's it's mental I love it yeah yeah <laughs> what form of activism do you find fits you best um it's hard to say i mean i do like talking to people um but i found myself 
doing a lot of activism last year and uh, before the whole COVID uh, situation. And to be honest, I was like close to a burnout and close to, to depression. And I found myself not being able to talk to people anymore because I was just not in the right mindset and not the right um, place and heart, I would say. Um, and I didn't feel like I could bring across the message, um, yeah, strong enough to actually show people, okay, this is, this is how we should be treating animals. So I, and then COVID happened and then I kind of felt like, okay, I need to go some different direction. And so I've, I've been a graphic designer and illustrator for many years now. And, um, I found myself doing lots of online activism again and that I could also do from home and uh, spread the message through illustrating and writing and re yeah like yeah doing doing my blog again and and doing lots of big illustrations that I then share on Instagram and um, try to inspire people uh, that way and um, so yeah I would say online activism is something I went back to but it's not just like answering to comments and having discussions online because I found that really ineffective for me because I get so emotionally involved that it actually causes anxiety for me so it's more about putting the content out there so content creation and um, yeah illustrating and giving people content that they then can share on Instagram or Facebook or wherever they want um, that's what I found myself yeah. doing the best I guess and that's great because you're helping other vegans to become active because they yeah. might not know the right things to say or how to present it and then you're giving them that platform that they can share it and and that, that's really good really positive um and, and how do you fit your activism yeah. in your life so when you were doing street activism how did you fit it around your your everyday life I was also an AV organizer for um quite some time and uh, it was actually not that easy because we had big TVs and we had to drive a car and I, I don't own a car myself so the other organizer had a car so we I always had to like take the car to work and then drive from there directly to um, the demonstration spot and we had three cubes a week uh, by the time when I was an organizer. So that was actually a lot of activism and a lot to plan and a lot to think about. And uh, I, I don't know, I think I just, I just wanted it so badly to happen and to give activists the opportunity to do activism that I just like fitted it in there. And um, yeah, I mean, I have to admit that sometimes it was a little bit too much uh, because a lot of like my free time I spent, of course, uh, doing activism in the cubes and then also on top online activism. And But I soon realized, okay, I need to take more care about my mental health as well. And I need to cut back somewhere. And when I'm not out there, other people will be out there speaking up for the animals. Yeah. So that, that helped me a lot. So yeah, knowing I think that. And one frustration I have, like having a full-time job is I wish I could do more, but you know, mm. three cubes a week. God, I thought I was doing a lot with four a month. So, but I had the same sort of attitude as you. Is we had yeah. some activists that could come on a Sunday, some that could come on a Saturday, mm. some that couldn't come on the weekend. So we had a Wednesday night cube, a Friday night cube, and then a Saturday and a Sunday cube. But they'd be spread out throughout the month, so it would give people options to come. And 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 I found that that built up. Um, the chapter quite well we, we were doing really really well before COVID we had like mm -hmm. 22 people coming out at every cube which is still quite small compared wow. to some of the larger ones but it you know I was happy with that it was a, a big enough crowd um, or big enough amount of volunteers to draw a crowd but three cubes a month on top of sorry three cubes a week on top of that like mm -hmm. online activism no wonder you had burnout self-care <laughs> is so important because mm. you know if we don't take care of ourselves we're no good to the animals no good yeah but, you know this is the point of doing this channel is that uh, vegans are such a small minority on the planet and only about one percent of us are actually active yeah. so then if we've got more of us active then it doesn't it means you don't have to do three cubes a week because there'll yeah. be more people out there so yeah. 
hopefully yeah but that's something you learn while you're doing activism you learn to recognize your own boundaries and um and set your own boundaries and and see okay this is how much i can do and i mean i think i'm speaking for the majority of activists out there but it's like you always have to feeling you're not doing enough and because the animals are still in the animal industry so i think but yeah like you said it like you have to realize okay at home like we have to take care about ourselves as well to be at our best speaking up for the animals and yeah um yeah as hard as it is as it is maybe not attending uh three activist events a week um but just two or one yeah because other people will be out there when you're taking a break yeah. and taking a rest and definitely um, yeah, I, yeah i was off work during lockdown in the uk um and i thought i'd be made redundant and i was asked to be an organizer for the save um in my town so i, I did that because i couldn't go out on the streets but we could go and do vigils because there was only a few of us yeah um and then i found out i was going back to work and i was doing my youtube channel and i was going to start up the av cubes again and i had to step down i thought you know what i can't I can't do it all. I, I actually yeah. don't have time. And because I work full time Monday to Friday, I would have felt a bit of a hypocrite being an organizer when I couldn't actually go to a vigil unless I was taking the morning off of work and annual leave. And I also knew, like you said, I knew my own limits. I knew that I wouldn't be able to do it. It would be too much, too much. Do you do a lot of your activism at the moment online on Instagram? Um, so have you got any way that you do any other activism? How do you promote activism? If you're doing any street activism again, how would you promote that? Mm, so yeah, I do most of my activism on Instagram, but then also my blog on my website. Uh, so I started my website and started to actually brand everything. So to make it more appealing to people. I mean, that's basically what I do uh, as a freelancer. Like I, I am into brand identity, I'm into, branding and graphic design and illustrations and everything. And then I finally had some time during, during the lockdown to actually think about, okay, how am I gonna brand and um, my activism to make it more appealing to people? So when they see like an illustration or they see a certain font that they automatically know, okay, it's from, it's from Kirsten and I can get information on her website. So that was my plan. If I would go to a street activism event, I think I would use the online community. Um, there's a lot of uh, groups on Facebook here for Vienna and activism. And there's also a lot of, like I always use the hashtag Vienna Vegan or Vegans of Vienna or Vegan Austria. So if someone visits Vienna, they then come up to my profile and then they can ask me questions on how to attend a demonstration so that I'm using the, the tools that are given to me for free to actually uh, promote street activism, to promote online activism and to get people the information they need to become vegan and active. Because uh, there's a lot of, I find a lot of um, activists on my profile. So I also see it as my moral obligation to uh, promote activism even more because there's, lots of vegans but then not all of them are active and i think like you said at the beginning there's so many forms of activism and i would say people should just start with what they have what they are passionate about if it's cooking and sharing recipes if it's like uh sharing content other people create to their instagram or to their facebook or yeah if it's I don't know, going on the streets and having demonstrations. And if they can't do that, then find a different way of, yeah, speaking up like a YouTube video or, um, yeah, being active in groups and supporting people who just joined a, a vegan group or an activist group and then give them the information. Yeah, so. What does it mean to you <laughs> to be an animal rights activist? Um, it uh yeah for me it means everything because um i've realized that i that my voice is actually valuable that i can use my voice for the good and uh to help those who do have a voice but aren't heard and um i think 
in the animal's position, it's the, the worst, like not having a voice and you're not heard and your screams aren't heard and your stories, yeah, kept in secret and it's, it's just hit behind walls. And I, I see it as a moral obligation to use my voice that I have in every single situation that I can. And if it's during a walk with my, with my companion dog, or if it's, you know, in the supermarket or yeah, whenever at family get togethers, um, for me, it means to just to speak up and, and yeah, don't let any system tell me what I can do and not do because I, I want to follow my heart and I want to do what's right. And yeah, I, I don't know, like there's so many thoughts in my mind right now and it's yeah. hard to put it to like into one sentence. Yeah. But um, yeah, You're right. It, we have, I think uh, all vegans have a moral obligation. We know what's happening. If we're not doing anything, then we're complicit to it in my eyes. Yeah. I totally believe that. I mean, my husband doesn't do any street activism, but he does talk to his friends and work colleagues. And yeah. He's helped a few of his work colleagues go vegan. And that, you know, I'm happy with that. You know, I don't really want him on the streets with me because that's my thing anyway. But, you know, he does do his little bit. So, and my last question to you. Yeah. Is, yeah. What would you say to vegans at the moment that are not active and want to get involved in activism? What would you say to inspire them? Um, like I said before, I like use whatever you're given and whatever you have to speak up for those who truly need your help because uh, just being vegan is not enough. Like we have to be active and just like, I don't know, like if different people in different professions and in different life situations get active, they reach other groups of people. For example, me, I would probably not reach out to a mother. Um, yeah, because I'm not in a kindergarten group or um, I'm not re meeting up with other parents because I don't have children myself. So I, I won't be able to reach those people. And uh, But those who do have children and are active and um, have a plant-based diet also with their ch and their children have a plant-based diet, they will be more likely to reach out to those people and show them how to do it. So it's, um, yeah, I think just get out of your comfort zone because uh, if we stay in our comfort zone, we'll never get the message out there. Like I, in the past few years, I've gotten out of my comfort zone so, so many times. And I saw, I never like thinking back when I was not vegan, I would never imagine myself getting out of my comfort zone so many times and feeling so uncomfortable. But once you do it and you, I just, I don't know if you feel inside and it, it just feels right to do it because we have to. And if it was us in the position of the animals, like always think about what would we want other people to do and how would we want them to speak up for us? I think that's the, that's the, the mindset we should have. And um, yeah, and everything else comes as we go, I guess. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Like starting up my YouTube channel was massively out of my comfort zone, huge, but I'm so glad I did it now. And I've met some amazing activists that I've interviewed from, you know, so far just India and the UK and, and Austria as well. Um, but it's just so lovely to connect and, and find that, you know, you're not alone as well. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing. Like you build up this community of friends that are activists and, you feel supported and you feel validated and it just gives you more fight because you everyone helps each other out and, and boosts each other up which is really important yeah yeah i feel the same like um also if somebody comes to me and and you know just asks me for help or, or for support um it's like i know how you like i don't know how you feel but i can imagine how you feel and um okay, this is how I solve this or, or how I dealt with this and that. And um, it's just like a, like a community that's so helpful and so supportive. And I would have never imagined in my life that this community exists. And um, 
yeah, it's just powerful to know that there are so many, like you said before, like there's so many people out there fighting for the same cause and for the better of every kind. And yeah. um, it just seems so logical now. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's overwhelming to be honest. Like it's hard to put into words. Yeah. But I'm very grateful yeah. for that. And I wouldn't want it any other way. No, me too. It's changed my life so much. Being vegan changed my life, number one, but being an animal yeah. rights activist, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. And I feel like I'm, I always say this in all my interviews with other activists is that I went vegan at 40 and I feel like I'm making up for all of that time that mm -hmm. I ate animals, you know, by, by being out there and, and spreading the message. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is if it's okay with you, I'll pop loads of links in, I'll pop your Instagram in and, and other links to the yeah. Austrian pages that you mentioned so that if anyone is watching from Austria and wants to get involved and they can connect with other activists and, and get involved in that. Yes, please. <laughs> but massive thank you for um, joining me today. And uh, yeah, it's just been lovely to speak to you and someone so passionate um, and dedicated to the animals. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Thanks for having me and for asking me for this interview. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so glad. I, the honor is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Kirsten, as you can see, is a fierce and amazing activist. She's really passionate and she's really involved in the animal rights movement. If you are in Austria and you've been inspired to reach out to her, then please put a comment below and let me know. That would be great. And I'll put in the description a list of all the ways you can contact her and a list of the different groups that are available in Austria for you to get involved in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, press like and share. And a massive thank you to my Patreons that support me on my Patreon page. If you want to support me in making more videos and you enjoy my content, then please check out the link below in the description. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>